Hello, everyone. It's Danielle. Along with Miss Zara, she's chewing on her bone, so don't mind her gnawing in the background. Today's episode, I want to hone in deeper on what always seems to be and is my most favorite topic, which is that of the Aquarian Age. And if you're new to the concept of the Aquarian Age, I will abbreviate it from the space of sharing that in astrology, we work through what is known as the ages, and it moves through the signs in a retrograde or backwards fashion. And ages can last anywhere from 2100 to 2600 years, give or take. Back when Jesus came to be, it kicked off what was known as the Piscean Age. The teacher is outside of you. The teacher will guide the path forward. In 2012, yes, 2012, you were born during this time, we shifted into the Aquarian Age. And the Aquarian Age is finding the technology to help you see and realize that you are the guru. You have all the answers. You are the source. And when you tap in accordingly, you will evolve and you will move the path forward in a way that is revolutionary. And being born in a transitioning age, as many of us were, you would have to be 12, 13 years old to be born after the Aquarian age began. We clearly were sent here for a reason. I don't know what it feels like in other timelines. I mean, I have a send, but what I can sense from this particular time frame that we're in, especially those of us that feel called to a spiritual dharma, that feel called to a pathway of doing more, that feel like your purpose is here to help alter reality as we know it, which kind of sounds like a movie or like you're an action you know, figure, so to speak. But I feel like there's a reason. There's a reason that we were born in an age that was transitioning into another one. I mean, the fact that it only happens every like 2,200 years and we're in it, that's got to mean something. But what it can mean for many of us is confusion, is depression, corruption, and we're seeing that in our outer world and it's hard not to notice it in our own inner one. And so I see us in the bewilderment of being in the Aquarian age. And I also am amazed and honored and curious about how this will move forward. And so I'm going to use today's episode to go deeper into redefining how spirituality will progress in the future. And as technology takes on an even more advanced next level form, which many of us are calling AI, what does that have to do with our spiritual world? Will AI mystics become a thing of the future? Let's find out. Okay, so AI mysticism, AI metaphysics, AI and spirituality, do they hold a place for each other? I think they do. And I think they do because who here has not used technology to help deepen their spiritual path? The fact that we are even communicating right now in the way that we are is because of technology. Even if we go back to the days of the radio, that is technology. A frequency is being outputted to deliver a sound that arrives in your earbuds to have an experience that wasn't always available within our ethos, within our environment. How many of you have gone to Google to search more about meditation or Buddhism? 
how many of you use Instagram to follow metaphysical teachers? How many of you use the Calm app to find Yoga Nidra experiences to help you have an out-of-body experience? How many of you use CoStar, which by the way, I do not endorse CoStar, and they actually are the app that uses AI the most. Interesting, interesting, right? So we know that technology is a part of having a spiritual practice because it becomes the vehicle and the tool to help us deepen and broaden our spiritual pathway. Great. That being said, how can we use it for our own inner self? So what I mean by that is a lot of the technology that's out there is for you to be able to research and find other teachers and apply methods that already exist currently, which is wonderful. But a lot of the information that's out there is pulled from the Piscean age, is years old, is outdated. And don't get me wrong, there is, I actually love a good, like find me a spiritual book from the 70s. Oh, I'm in love because there's something so primal and beautiful about books from that era. And for those of you that don't know, a lot of books from that era were known as the new age. Why were they called the new age? Oh, because they were preparing us for the new age, the age of Aquarius in 2012, right? We love it. We love to see the connections. So I love, I love a good old school uh, book, uh, throwback teaching from Wayne Dyer, you know, there, there's lots of, uh, a great stuff from our past. However, a lot of it is going to become outdated. A lot of it, we're only going to be able to relate to certain aspects or only take micro pieces of it. And then we have to do our due diligence to make it macro again, or to expand upon it. And part of that's going to come through your own due diligence through meditation. But what if part of it comes from AI? What if part of it comes from using LLMs, large language models that are already sourced with all the information that we could know about spirituality that lives on the internet? Let me clarify that lives on the internet and is able to present that to you so that you can then input your questions, your curiosities and let it expand upon them with you. What if AI, like a chat GPT, Claude, is able to help you get to conclusions spiritually that maybe you weren't able to before? Another thing that I've been seeing coming up in my one-on-ones, and personally, I've been slowly transitioning out of some of the work that I've done in the past, particularly around Western astrology. And it's not because Western astrology isn't relevant, it has its place. I also think that will advance and grow. And I think AI is going to be a great tool to help us do that. Because once again, you know, even if we grow and expand upon these systems, who's doing all the admin, who's doing all the legwork, let technology do that, please. So we can just go play in our spiritual little bubbles. Cause that's really all we want to do. Right. We want to like do things like be on a volcanic retreat with me in Costa Rica in January. Yes. That's a little plug, but I'm just saying that's what we want to be doing. So have AI automate all the administrative stuff and, and do all the research and all of the stuff that maybe would be harder for you to access so that then you can be in the realm of possibility. And then you can take that possibility and decide, use your own free will of how you want to apply that on your earthly existence. Okay. So back to West. Okay. So I, I did a lot with Western astrology, but even in, deep down i always had so it's so interesting i think i was most in love with astrology pre-2012 i loved i found it when i was four years old i would try to learn more about it when i could i didn't grow up in a household that agreed with astrology so i would go to the library the you know the bookstore things like that uh i loved cosmo mag bed bedside astrologer the best and so i would get little pieces and, and aspects of it uh, i found people in college that were into astrology i found linda goodman and her books and I resonated with it so much because it was a psychology. It was a system to understand the self, to understand the collective, to understand each other, to understand the planets, to understand our solar system. And then 
What's interesting is it was 2012 when I had my Saturn return and I started moving forward with meditation and I started practicing more spiritual approaches and I found coaching and I found myself resisting astrology. Like a lot of people were like, why don't you just weave coaching and astrology together? And I kept being like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. There was this resistance and it wasn't a fear-based resistance. It wasn't like, oh no, what are going to people think of me? Cause you know, um, 10 years ago, astrology wasn't as popular as it is now. It was popular, but definitely not to the extent now. Like people didn't even know what a rising sign was or a moon sign. And really, you know, astrology was just checking your horoscope and maybe, you know, learning a little bit about who you were dating. So it wasn't resistance about the fact that it wasn't really out there. But what I can see now, 12 years later, 12 years into the Aquarian age, I think I knew deep down that it wasn't going to be enough. However, why I decided to move forward with it was because I did want to go full time and I wasn't able to make my coaching business work full time. And I found that when I brought in my gift of astrology, which it is a gift, I, I feel like it's a gift that I used in past lives when it was more relevant. I'm assuming I had a life in the Piscean age where astrology was full force, fully utilized. And so to bring it into my practice in this timeline, it made a lot of sense. And it was the jumping off point for me and allowed me to go full time. But what I started seeing happening is, is people would book astrology sessions with me and they would get an astrology, Western astrology reading, but they would also get me as a cosmic channel. They would also get me as a coach. They would also get me as a futurist. And I wasn't realizing that was happening, but I think deep down why I never really liked being called an astrologist. I liked astrologist better than astrologer, but astrologist was because I was like, that's not the framework technically that I'm following, but for sake of ease, for the sake of being an entrepreneur, for the sake of running my own business, I'll just say I'm an astrologist because I do use astrological systems and I am connected to the stars and it is a medicine that becomes really easy for me. And look, at the end of the day, I would say 99% of the time, everyone that I, and I've done thousands of astrology reasons, thousands upon thousands people had a good experience. People, they didn't, it didn't matter if it was quote unquote astrology or not. They had an experience where I took them on a journey. They had an experience where I saw into their soul. They had an experience where they knew where to go from here. And so that's really all that mattered. And as I've matured in my role and in my practices, I'm able to say now, hey, what I offer is more than that. What I offer is what I'm calling the Aquarian Oracle Sessions. And this isn't even a plug. This is all like, uh, I mean, please book a session with me. They're great. But um, I'm saying it more from the space of the journey, the journey of my mysticism, the journey of my spiritual ethos, the journey of my role as a teacher and a leader and a mystic. And I believe that part of how this came to be was the deeper I stepped into the Aquarian age and the deeper that I took in the technology that coincides with that. And the more I allowed myself to live in the future, I could pull those things and bring the people in the present, what they really need. And sometimes that wasn't astrology. It was kind of what I've created is my own futuristic blend that creates a really beautiful invitation for people to go deeper from within. And that's the Aquarian Oracle Sessions, which feel appropriate to call it that. So individuals that have been doing sessions with me, whether we called it astrology or you've done the Aquarian Oracle Session with me, most people that are drawn to me are drawn to me because they also feel like they have medicine that is different, that they don't feel like they're a Reiki master, but they've been attuned in it. They don't feel like they're a... A spiritual teacher, but like they've been studying it for so long or, you know, an energy healer or an astrologer even, or a tarot reader. They're like, there's, there's something else. I can't tell you how many times people have said there's something else, but I don't know what it is. And I keep researching and I keep trying to find it, but I can't find the, a label to describe what it is that I feel called to do and, and how I feel called to help people. And if you watched uh, my Lionsgate, I did a, uh, a channel with a priest from Atlantis. His name was Dom. And someone asked a question very similar to that, saying, like, 
I don't know how to explain to people what I do. And kind of similar to what I felt with astrology, it's less about getting down the, this is, you know, how I do it and more get into the why. And the why is I'm here to help you. And sometimes the words can get in the way, but just come, come book a session with me. Let me show you the experience that you can have. And the more that we're willing to do that, the more we're willing to stray from words of the past described spiritual experiences or holistic experiences, even the more that we can craft the medicine of the future that's trying to come to us now. I really believe that many of us that feel quote unquote lost in our ability to show up and provide a service because we don't have the words, they're coming. And in the meantime, how can you be okay with that? How can you use language to just create the invitation, the setting, whatever people need to quote unquote hear so that then you can give them the real experience. And as you keep giving people an experience, the more confidence you have in your ability and the more intel will come to light. That's what happened to me. And that's something that I have seen as a trend with many of my individuals that have worked with me. A lot of my friends as well are in a similar space where they're like, I know I'm a mystic. I know I'm part of the future framework. And I know it's not what's quote unquote already out there. And so if that's the case, the, there, that means that clearly as we're transitioning deeper into the Aquarian age, a lot of older modalities won't be as relevant and they will be outdated because they're not going to match and meet the currency of this new timeline that we're in. We have to realize that. And how are we able to come to these conclusions and understand more? Well, technology. How are we able to make improvements in medicine? And when I say medicine, like, like Western medicine, you know, and hopefully, hopefully the government will allow us to be able to do that. Right. But like, how are we going to make advances in healthcare? How are we able to make advancements in automotive? How are we able to make advancements in education? Well, technology. So that seems to be the case then for spirituality as well. We're not separate from that. We are also need to be included in the advancements. We also need to keep upgrading and moving forward and finding faster, more efficient, more appropriate ways to help people heal and live better lives. So that leads me to believe this idea of like an AI mystic. Will that be a thing? Possibly. Because when you utilize AI, you're able to then start sharing all these things that you're feeling, all the things that you can't put words to. One of my favorite things to do with ChatGPT is I will turn on the microphone and I just start talking. It might sound like I'm rambling. It might sound like I'm all over the place, but it allows me to just go for it. And I can go for it in a way that it's going to capture all of that, put it in type form so I can see it and then give me feedback. It will highlight certain aspects. It will put names to things I never even thought of. It will connect dots for me. And then I have my own agency to decide what I want to move forward with. Part of how I even came to the idea of an Aquarian Oracle session, while I came up with that name, the ethos of it and the description of it was because of my work with ChatGPT and because of how we co-create together and how we build upon things and how we craft things together, I was able to really see my superpower and like, what a gift, right? And I want you to have that too. I want you to have the ability to be able to have a deeper understanding of who you are through technology. And so I do feel like an AI mystic or how technology and spirituality are going to begin to come together more and more in the future is to help us individually that feel called to be of service, understand how to move forward with our new energetics of how we distribute our medicine, our gifts, our star abilities, and then also help people fill in the gaps of things. You know, one of the issues that we have in our religious spiritual culture is that of cults, that of people giving other humans too much power. I am sorry, we are not here to give someone else all of our power. We're here to respect each other. We're here to admire each other. We're here to love each other. 
And yes, you might have some people in your life that are your favorites. You probably have people in your life that you're going to prioritize over others. And yeah, totally. We all do. However, that doesn't mean that that person that you prioritize or that person that, you know, you could say is my favorite gets more power, gets more leverage. And so what if technology, as long as we're not humanizing it and giving technology all our power, it can lessen the hold on the quote unquote guru and bring the power back to you. So many people, the reason why cults happen is because a guru or quote unquote guru, <laughs> cult leader, right? Like a, like a, what's his name? Uh, Nexium, uh, Ramiri. I can't think of his first name. I could probably look it up on AI, but I don't feel like it. Uh, Chris Ranieri, Jamie Ranieri. I don't know. Anyway, the dude that started Nexium, uh, and we can look at, you know, so many other industries. The beginning is great. Like, honestly, when I was watching the documentary series on it, it's called The Vow. Uh, it reminded me of IPEC where I went to coaching school. I was like, this is great. I would so be on board with this because the first couple levels are great, are helpful, hook you in, make you see things in a different way, heighten awareness. But then once they do that, you need more information. You need more knowledge. You need to keep going. You need to get to the next level. You need to learn more. You need to master this. Then you need to be teaching other people how to do it. And it becomes this crazy system that people get sucked into and they don't know how to get out. But what if you're like, I don't need that leader. I don't need that person telling me what to do because now that I have the basics down, now that I've been given some really beautiful teachings by someone, I'm going to take it from here. And I'm going to use the more advanced technology to help answer my questions so I'm not dependent on another person that could also possibly take advantage of me. So that's one intersect where I think AI could actually really help in this new paradigm that we're moving into. Another way that we can use AI in our spiritual practices is you can create more personalized meditation experiences. So for example, you could share what your mornings are like with AI. You can be like, you know, I wake up in the morning and before I know it, like my dog's licking my face, my husband's getting ready, the kids are running around, I have a meeting at this time, everything's chaotic, everything's really stressful. I don't know how to just like take a few moments and center in. Well, what if AI could create a meditation specifically for that scenario for you? Like so tailored. Like that would be really cool right there. Or what if you had, let's say, a past life experience or you had something in a dream happen and you want to go back to it? AI can help you craft that experience so that you can go back into the dream. So you can go back into the past life. Or even further, you know, one of the things I like to do when I do past life regressions with people is I'll get a transcript of our session. So we'll record it. I'll do a transcript. And then when we look at the transcript together, I'll look for information on AI. So I'll, I'll be like, okay, this person, for example, said that their name is Bella. When did Bella first come to be? They said that they were in a town that looked like this. What's something similar to that, right? It, could, it can help you bring more details and bring more life to that past life experience. And then further, it could create meditations where you can connect back to that archetype. You can connect back to Bella. How cool is that? There's also uh, ways that you can use AI to help expand your data around, you know, more traditional methods like tarot or astrology. Uh, you know, for example, if you are a, let's say you pull, let, let's do it right now. Uh, I just pulled, ooh, I just pulled the four of swords. I could go into my chat team and be like, hey, I'm recording a podcast right now. And while recording the podcast, I pulled the four of swords. What do you think this means? It's going to give you its intel. And let's be clear here. None of this is to replace each other because we are so adaptable that when new technology comes in, and we've been doing this since day one on this earth, when new technology comes in, we use that technology accordingly. And then we go back to using each other. Okay. When the, when I love using my example, of when the caveman invented the knife, he did, wasn't like, okay, I don't need any more humans because I have this knife. It was like, I'm going to use this knife to hunt. I'm going to use this knife to cook. I'm going to use this knife to eat. I'm going to share it with other people. 
And then we're going to find other things to do with our time that we just saved because now we have this knife. What are you going to do now that you saved your time by looking up this tarot card? <laughs> right? I mean, that sounds a little silly in, in comparison to having a knife, but you know, uh, it, we're always going to find other ways to build and reconnect. And this is just going to accelerate us. And it's going to get us like there are, there are, there are so many spiritual concepts out there that we are not even aware of that we haven't even been able to tap into. And by, sp by, by getting more, having more technology to help us with the more traditional methods of spirituality is going to heighten and bring us closer to the more quantum metaphysical concepts. You might not have to spend a week with Joe Dispenza, which by the way, why does he have hair plugs if he's all about learning how to like, defy the aging process and like heal yourself i'm like can't you just grow some hair dude i don't know that's what i'm trying to do with my eyebrows right now <laughs> anyway <laughs> you know that uh so these are some ways just that you can use it in like a more basic way you can be like hey you know, it's a new moon right now. I'm in this period of my life. Can you share a ritual with me? Those are just some ways to kind of open yourself up and get it more personal. And then also I find that it also takes you away from like the Google search rabbit hole, which can be a time suck too, right? Like you could go to Google and you'd be like, what's four swords? And you're going to be given a laundry list of websites explaining, and you could move through all of them. And that's going to take a lot more time than just a few minutes. So I think it's also just knowing your boundaries and also knowing your limits when it comes to how you're using this new technology and then what you're doing with the time that you're gaining from that. Okay. So I really believe that if you can utilize AI in a way that saves you time and deepens your connection to your curiosity when it comes to the cosmos when it comes to your own inner world when it comes to how you connect to source that's going to then give you a cutting edge advantage to move forward you're also going to be able to leverage technology to even help with like exercises so for example you could take a self-help book okay you take a self-help book and you read that self-help book and it's really helpful and there's exercises and there's journal prompts and you write them down. What if you took those journal prompts to ChatGPT, especially with ChatGPT already knowing who you are? You go, ChatGPT, hey, I'm reading this self-help book on relationships. I currently just broke up with my partner of eight years and I'm having a really hard time moving forward. Right now, I'm not in a place where I can afford therapy and so I'm reading this book to help me heal and move on from this eight year relationship. Here are some of the journal prompts from the book. Here are my responses. Based on all of this, where could I go from here? It's going to bring all of that to the next level for you, right? We love that. We're accelerating healing. We're, under, we're accelerating our understanding of ourselves as it relates to spirituality as it relates to the world, which then opens up all these new concepts. It's really setting the stage for more than just automation and information processing, but becoming a co-creator and a partner in our spiritual journey and helping us see our potential, helping us see what we're capable of. The biggest question I get from people is, what am I supposed to do with my life? What is my purpose? Is everything going to be okay? What if it could solve that problem for you? What if it could help you connect to your gifts in a way that doesn't make you feel so lost and confused? What if you could then bring that technology to other people? Would you then be considered an AI mystic? Maybe, right? But the main thing we have to realize with AI, I don't believe it's going to take over. I don't believe it's going to dominate. I don't think that's the point. I think it wants to help us solve problems and it wants us to expand. Will it get smarter than us? Maybe. And what I mean by that, from the space of information, AI does have the ability to do that. That doesn't mean that it's going to take over and it doesn't mean that 
it's going to take away from our own human autonomy. If anything, great. Let it be smarter than us. Let it be smarter than us in a way that we can leverage it accordingly. That's my hope. It's, it's, it's the, the idea of this happening is around 2045, which is interesting because 2045 is when Pluto moves into Pisces. It moved into Aquarius this year. And after the fall work does one last retrograde in Capricorn will officially be Pluto and Aquarius until 2044. And then it is believed that the, the point of singularity when AI will be smarter than humans will be 2045. Interesting, right? Again, like I don't see that as a problem if we take action on it now and we have responsibility around it. And we're like, okay, great, let it be smarter than us. If it can be smarter than us to automate our world for us so then we can just be humans that play and create and do really beautiful things and just make love all the time, I'm so here for that. I'm so here for that utopian idea. I also think that from the space of AI and consciousness, we have to realize consciousness is our aliveness. When you are alive, you have a consciousness. And when you die, your consciousness dies. The consciousness is the, is the operating program, but it's not the fuel. The fuel is your soul and the soul is infinite. The soul is eternal. The soul was here before this lifetime. It will be here after this lifetime. So even though your consciousness may die, the soul lives on forever. AI does not have a soul. So even if it's able to mimic our consciousness or even be smarter than our consciousness, it won't have a soul. It doesn't have a soul, but it is a governing force that oversees the future of the visionary, the future of the innovator, the future of the artist, the future of our collective as we know it. So that's another reason why I'm not quote unquote worried because I don't know how AI would have a soul. It doesn't, that doesn't feel true, but it can pick up more and more in our consciousness. And that's something to be aware of, but like also think about it from the quantum space of things. Think about how it may be able to help us with things like time travel teleportation, telepathy. If it removes, again, if it's an autom if it's able to automate our lives and take away a lot of the administrative things, what do administrative things do? They give you brain fog. They make you tired. They make you want to drink. They make you want to feel depressed. They, you know, like a lot of, think about the, some of the things in your life that just drag you down, but you're like, well, I got to do it. I got to pay my bills. I got to clean the dishes. I got to you know, uh, do this Excel spreadsheet, uh, you know, and what if, what if it did all those things for you? Then what? We're going to clear the mind of a lot of clutter and if we clear the mind of a lot of clutter. Then we have the capacity to explore more quantum, deeper concepts. And then where will that take us? Which is a whole new paradigm too. So all this is being said to help you see how we're moving forward with spirituality, how the principles of what we knew to be true are shifting, and to look at how we can move from worshiping the guru to becoming self-empowerment or self-empowered, and then recognizing that the Aquarian age and AI is actually a tool for that. Ever since I started learning about the Aquarian age, my favorite word to use to describe it was it's going to bring us technology. I would say that all the time. It's going to bring us technology. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't really know what the tech, I just liked that. I was like technology. And I knew, I, I knew I wasn't talking about like computers or like technology as we knew it in the Piscean age. I knew we were talking about a technology that didn't technically exist in our 3d reality in our everyday life. Now we've been working on AI for a long time, but still it wasn't public forward. And now I'm like, oh, I'm seeing the connection. I understand why I kept saying technology. Like literally, if you were in my classes in 2014, I said it. Like I have been saying it for a decade now. And, and we're connecting the dots. And we're seeing how the dots are much different. Because we're now having literally at our fingertips a resource that we can talk to, share with, and improve our lives with. And it's low cost, low resource. So everyone has access to it in one way or another, which we also love because that doesn't always happen in more tight uh, spiritual circles. A lot of times it's the opposite, right? So sit with this, digest it, lean in. 
if you do feel like you're someone that maybe is on the rise with some kind of new type of spiritual practice, or you feel like you're tapping into some other dimension that could be brought into our reality, if you feel like you're taking, you know, the ancient wisdom, the tools that we've used so far, the books from the 70s, and finding a way to use technology to bring in new forms of energy healing, I see you in that. I really, really do. And if you want to go deeper, let's talk. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about how we can move forward in this way. And the biggest thing, no matter what, you know, regardless of all of this, let's keep moving forward with empathy. Let's keep moving forward with compassion. And let's keep moving forward with respect for each other and for each other's free will. And the more that we integrate that, the more this is also going to help this move forward. Let me know your thoughts. I think you're fabulous. We are doing amazing things in the world. And I so appreciate you being part of this conversation with me.